Have you ever needed to align a scanned mesh into Fusion but found it really difficult? Well, Autodesk just added a brand new command called Align Mesh, and it's pretty cool. So let's take a look at how to use this new command. So let's start out by inserting a mesh into our design. Uh, I grabbed this mesh off of GrabCAD. Um, you can see it's a laser scan mesh, and as typical with laser scan meshes, they kind of come in at some random orientation. Um, you'll notice this one's not very clean. It's got a lot of open faces, etc. Now, if you're laser scanning your own meshes, um, I recommend trying to orient it correctly in your laser scan software, if possible, before bringing it into Fusion. But if not, this is where the new align mesh command in Fusion really is gonna help you out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and like I mentioned before, you can kind of see it's at some random orientation in relation to the origin. So we're gonna jump into the mesh menu across the top, and then we need to go into direct edit. So I'm gonna click on direct edit, I'll select the mesh, I'll say okay, and now we're in this direct mesh editing mode, and here is the new command, mesh align. Now it's asking for a from and a to. So because we're in the direct editing mode, you can see it's allowing me to select faces. And what I'm gonna start out by doing is I wanna line like the top of this winch model to my top plane of my origin. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and find, you know, what I would consider a flat face on this mesh. So I might grab like maybe one of these larger flat faces like this one right here as my from face, and then I'll click on this to, and I'll select this top plane. And I'm kind of using the cube here as a reference, so I know that this is my top plane. So I'll select that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on preview to kind of see what that did. And sure enough, you can see how it took that face and lined it up with the top plane. And I'll go ahead and say okay. Now you'll notice it's still kind of crooked, but it's lined up planar with that top plane. So let's run that command again. I'll say mesh align. And now I need to pick uh, another face to kind of help line it up with, um, like for example, the X direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can see that on the, the side of this, there's you know some some flat faces over here. So I'll go ahead and select one of these faces, maybe one of these larger ones like this one here. And I'll select a plane like this side plane here. Again, I'll do a preview and we can see how that kind of rotated it around. And it still looks like it's planar in that direction. And now it's lined up in that direction also. And if I click on my front view, we can see that that looks good that way. As we rotate around, we can see it looks good that way. And if I click on the top, we can see it looks good that way also. So I'll say finish direct editing. And just like that, we've now lined up the orientation of this inserted laser scanned mesh with our origin. Now, if I want to move this over to the origin, I can go ahead and just say move copy. And I'm going to do a point to point. And you'll notice when I um, come over here to my origin point, um, I can click on like endpoints or midpoints. Or if I get kind of near the middle, you can kind of see this dot appearing. Now it's not catching to the mesh, it's actually catching to the center of this bounding box. So um, in fact, if I kind of rotate a little, well, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see here in a moment. But I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and click there, and then I'm gonna click on the origin, and it moved the 3D model, or the mesh, to that origin. I'll go ahead and say OK, and we can now see that that mesh has been moved point to point, and now it's more like at the zero, zero, zero point of the origin. So this next example, I'm going to insert a more complicated mesh. Uh, this is a, a fender from a motorcycle, and once again, we can see that it's in some random orientation. 
I'll go ahead and say okay. Um, let's go ahead and try and um, line this mesh up using the mesh align command. Now there's not really a lot of flat faces on here. I guess there's like this flat surface here. So I'll select, you know, one of these faces and let's pick our top plane there, do a quick preview. And we can see that sure enough, that kind of lined it up, but I don't have any other faces to select to kind of line it up with like the X or the Y direction. And if I were to take a look at it from the side here, it's, you can kind of tell it's not really lined up. And that's because these faces kind of taper down a little bit. They're kind of angled a little bit. So how would you go about uh, lining something like this that doesn't really have flat surfaces to line up with these planar faces of our origin? Well, so what I do is I actually create the flat surfaces on the mesh to help me line them up. So let me show you that methodology. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it kind of lined up like this for now. And I need to be able to create uh, some planes. So I'm gonna do a construction plane and I'll say plane through three points, but you'll notice I can't select the points on this mesh. So I want to create a converted mesh. And this is a really complicated mesh and I don't want to have Fusion have to calculate such a, a complicated mesh. So what I'm gonna do is create a copy of this right on top of itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, and I'll go ahead and rename this. I'll just say copy and let's go ahead and reduce. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the original really quick. I'll say reduce, I'll click this guy. I'm gonna leave everything default for now. I'll say okay. And you can see it removed quite a few of the triangles. I'll do that again. We could probably reduce it even more because all I really care about is you know, seeing where these holes are located. And now you can see compared to the original, we still have a lot of information in this reduced one. And now what I want to do is convert this mesh. Now by default, it's usually set to like parametric and prismatic. Well, I want to convert it to a faceted mesh and we don't need it to be parametric. So I'm going to say base feature and faceted and I'll say, okay. And because we simplify the model, it doesn't take very long to convert this mesh. And now you'll notice it allows me to select faces or edges or points on this new mesh because it's an actual body. So this is like a surface model. And now, for example, if I were to say create a plane through three points, I can actually catch points on this reference model. And in fact, I want to create a plane that kind of maybe slices through, you know, th you know, these holes over here. So I'm going to just grab a couple points that kind of, you know, are near these holes. So I might grab like that point there, maybe a point like that point there and a similar point here. And now it's created a plane that's kind of sliced through um, those three points. And that kind of gives me a basic um, idea of the orientation of where these holes are on that model. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna know where these holes are lined up. So I'll go ahead and create an axis through two points. And I'm just gonna grab maybe like a point like maybe this guy right here and a similar point on like this circle here, maybe that guy right there. And I'll say, okay. And then lastly, I'll create a plane at an angle. So let's do um, maybe like 90 degrees in this case. So the reason I did this is I need to create some sketches on these planes. And then we're gonna use those sketches to line up our original mesh. So I'll go ahead and start maybe with this plane here and I'll create a sketch. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. Well, I wanna make sure the rectangle intersects the mesh. And so a neat trick to do this is I'm gonna turn on slice 
and you can see where the sketch is slicing through um, the mesh and then I'm just gonna draw a rectangle that kind of intersects with that a little bit like so and if I turn slice back on we can see that sure enough that rectangle is intersecting with that um, the mesh so I'll go ahead and say finish sketch and what we're gonna do basically is create a patch I'll say OK. And then under Mesh, I'm going to tessellate that. So I'm going to turn that surface into a mesh. And you'll see when I say OK, you'll see it kind of like have a triangular uh, mesh just like these guys do. OK, I'll do the same thing for this here. I'll go ahead and create a sketch. I'll turn on Slice so I can kind of see what that looks like. And once again, I'm just going to draw a rectangle that kind of intersects that a little bit. We'll do a quick surface patch. I'll do a tessellate on that surface patch. And we can see that that's intersecting just a little bit. And so what we've done is created these flat planes that we're going to end up merging with our original mesh. And then we're going to use these flat planes to help us align to our origin. So I'll come in here. Let's do a direct edit. Actually, I lied. Before we do that, we need to combine them. So I'm going to say combine. Now, here's the important thing. By default, it's usually set to join. We do not want to join these faces to the mesh. We want to merge them. You'll notice merge says combines the bodies into a single mesh without altering the faces of the original mesh. If I said join, it would try and figure out how to calculate how to you know join these together and it takes a really long time and usually fails in most cases. But if I say merge, I'll say here's the target. What's the tool bodies? I can go ahead and select the tool bodies here and here. I'll say OK, and you can see instantly it merged those together. It didn't really have to calculate anything, but that's all part of the, uh, the original Fender now. So make sure you use Merge. OK, now I can come in and say Direct Edit, select the body. We can use the Mesh Align command. And let's do the from, I'll select like maybe this face here to this face here. Let's do a quick preview and let's flip that around. And then we can see that it lined that flat plane there with that flat plane there. Okay. And if we look at it from the front, we can see this plane here is kind of at a slight angle. So we're going to do that one next. So let's go ahead and do mesh align. We'll click maybe like that plane there to that plane there. I'll kind of look at it from the front a little bit. Let's do a preview. You can kind of see how that rotated ever so slightly. And we'll say OK. And now if we look at it from the top, we look at it from the right, we can see how this is now lined up much more correct than when we first brought it in. So that's a quick little tip on how I line those guys up with the origin. But what about these little faces now? Well, we're still in our direct editing, so I can just select these faces and hit the delete key on my keyboard and they go away and we haven't modified our original mesh at all. I'll say finish direct editing and it is correctly oriented. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and share it with others. And as always, have fun learning Fusion, and see you next time.